How many of you like the idea of not having to pay for gas by a show of hands? That's what I thought. <laughs> now, how many of you have ever gone so far to think about buying an electric car? A couple. That's surprising. Well, with fuel prices continuing to soar, I can understand why you may be thinking this way. Well, my name is Ryan Wallace, and I am passionate about the environment and keeping nature clean. And I wanted to know everything about the environmental implications that these electric vehicles, or EVs as otherwise known, are doing. So, because electric cars could be the future, but right now, they're hurting the environment. So today I'm going to talk to you about three things. How these electric cars are hurting the environment, how we can fix them, and what the future of driving could look like. So first, let's start with how electric cars are hurting the environment. So, there's many major aspects of these electric cars, but one of them is the battery, and that is essentially the lifeblood of these cars. And these batteries are mainly produced overseas in places like China, Indonesia, or Japan. And their pollution regulations are a lot less strict than here in the United States. So they're contributing to environmental pollution, which is really having an adverse effect on the environment. And according to a British study recently posted in the week in 2011, pollution from the factories that makes these batteries an electric car has a carbon footprint bigger than a gas burning vehicle until it has traveled 80,000 miles. 80,000 miles. Think about how long it would take you to drive 80,000 miles. But it's not just the production of these batteries, it's also the mining process. You see, these, a major component is lithium to make batteries. And lithium is created by taking out part of the earth, pouring in water, and then dumping in chemicals. And those chemicals react with water over time to form a layer of lithium on the bottom. And this is an example of one in South America. And those are all lithium ponds. And these lithium ponds are then drained out, and the lithium is removed, and then processed. But that toxic water is leaching into the ground water and causing horrible, horrible drinking water for people. And it's also hurting the environment really bad. See, and this is mainly happening in third world countries, so we don't see the effects here at home. All we see is the brain in the Prius in the driveway. And then there's also an effect to you, it's yourself. See, the cost to replace these batteries. Look, these batteries are only lasting about 10 years, and they're very expensive to replace. According to Jim Matavalli of PluggingCars.com in 2012, replacing environmental battery costs will be between $9,000 and $18,000. And I don't know about you, but that is a lot of money. And, but besides just the batteries, there's also the energy used to power these batteries. A major thing that we use to power batteries is coal. Coal energy is a huge part of the world's energy. As you can see right here, that huge purple section is coal power in the world. 41%, 41%. And just in the US alone, according to the US Energy Information Administration, in 2012, coal is the fuel for about 37% of the four trillion kilowatt hours of electricity generated by the United States. So if you think about it, your car, or your electric car, your clean vehicle, is being powered by a coal plant down the road. And that right there is hurting the environment. And that coal is burned, burns very, very dirty. And that leads to severe air pollution. And this has been noted in China. They have horrible air pollution, and this is due because they have such a high output of coal. And people in China are starting to buy these electric cars. And they're thinking that they are going to clean up the air by driving their zero emission car. But according to Christopher Cherry, Assistant Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the University of Tennessee, he found that in terms of air pollution, electric vehicles were more harmful to public health per kilometer traveled than their gasoline counterpart. So if you imagine you're driving down the road next to that Prius, you're actually saving the environment and they're destroying it. So, but besides the batteries and the power used to them, there's also the design of the cars. You see, because the batteries are so heavy, Weight saving measures had to be done in the other places, like the hood and the doors. They had to use aluminum. Aluminum is much lighter and it's with the same strength, but it requires a massive amount of energy to produce and it has an extensive manufacturing process, which is very hard on the environment. And also, the traction motor, or what powers the wheels, is copper, a lot of copper. And copper is mainly found in third world countries where they strip mine and then they use chemicals to extract it. And those chemicals are leaching into the water and then also the adverse effects of strip mining. And then the final one is the rare earth magnets 
found in the traction motor itself. These rare earth metals are called dysprosium neodymium, and they're only found in China. And because they're found in China, the Chinese aren't very strict on their regulations, so they have a huge effect on how they mine these out and how badly they're hurting the environment. But electric cars at the moment are worse than their gas competitors, but with the right changes, they could be our future. You see, if we change the manufacturing process, change our factories to clean factories, ones that are 100% rely on renewable energy and renewable resources, we could have a brighter future. But we need to start with the batteries. And luckily enough, this is already beginning. Angela Belcher, a researcher at MIT, recently invented a virus battery. And this is the virus battery that she took to show the President of the United States to show that we can have these renewable energy sources. And she created this virus battery by taking a non-human affecting strain of a virus and then genetically modifying it so it links together and then current can pass through it. And it also stores energy. See, these batteries have no pollution at all and they don't have any effect on the environment. And they are also extremely lightweight. And they can take the shape of only, almost any object. And this is the future of how our batteries should be. And these should be in production in the next five years. And then there's also other cars that are starting to appear. Recently, the Tesla Model S just came out. And this car has a 300 mile range, which compared to its other competitors is almost triple. And this car is produced in a zero emissions plant, which is very different than such things as the Nissan Leaf or the Chevy Volt. Those cars are hurting the environment. But this car is double the price. But it's also outselling those cars two to one. So this is the future, and they're also going to be releasing another model in the next coming years for families. But this is the type of model that they are setting the precedent that we need. But we also need green energy. These are all examples of green energy. We have tidal, solar, wind, uh, current, and geothermal. And all these examples are being used in other countries to power their vehicles and power their energy grid, but the US is falling behind. We are not investing enough in renewable energy, and this is leading to poor environmental health. And the final thing we can do is eco roads. Eco roads are a new invention that are taking place in the Netherlands. And essentially, they look like this. And they have little magnets in the ground that as you drive over them, it creates a magnetic field, and it charges the battery of your electric vehicle as you drive. So we really need to reinvent from the ground up. Okay? The road has been around since the Romans. It's time to change. And this right here, this is stretch is being a 100 kilometer stretch in the Netherlands is being, will be completed by December 2013. By changing the manufacturing process and using cleaner energy to power these cars, we can have a much more environmentally friendly world. So, I want you guys to close your eyes. I want you to visualize something. A world with 100% clean cars and eco roads. A world where you never have to fill up your gas tank. A world where you pull out of your driveway, pull on the street, and your car starts charging as you drive. A world where you can say you left a cleaner future for your children. In conclusion, there are many problems with these electric cars, but we can fix them. Because we can now show how the future of driving will look. And I ask you to think about this advice before buying your next car. And also, please encourage green energy in this country because it truly is the solution to so many of these problems. Because only you can solve this problem. 